Hey everyone, it's Carissa at Sprinkled with Glitter. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I am super excited to share this card project because it is so adorable. I'm going to be using this Lawn Fawn Slide On Over die set to create a slider card. And I am going to combine it with this adorable set from Lawn Fawn as well. This is called Mermaid for You. Mermaid for You. <laughs> Now, I don't do cutesy so often. Um, it's just not something that's really been in my wheelhouse a whole lot, but I really had a great time with this. So I'm starting out here. I have a couple of the mermaids mounted here on my mini Misty, and I'm stamping in, in the Hero Arts Intense Black ink. Now, this is a Copic-friendly ink, but I wanted to show you when I stamped these, I didn't get the greatest of impressions there. It wasn't a really super solid black line like I like. I'm going to try re-stamping it. I thought maybe my stamps just weren't seasoned enough, but this is like maybe the second time using this ink. And I have to tell you, it is really, I think I prefer the Memento Tuxedo Black ink over this Hero Arts Intense Black ink. So just keep that in mind. I'm using it because I wanted to try it out, but I think maybe my preference is still the Memento Tuxedo Black ink. So now I'm going to be coloring my mermaids. I am starting out with a base of YG93 and YG95. Now I got this tip from Kelly over at Lawn Fawn. I saw a video that she did where she was coloring these mermaids. She started with that olive green undertone and then added the BG13 on top of it. And it gives you a really beautiful color for that mermaid tail. Now I've kind of sped up the coloring here just so that I could leave it in, but I'm really doing just some basic Copic coloring here. The skin tone and the little bra, I guess, I don't know, what is that? It's its a bra, right, that she's wearing? <laughs> the bikini top, we'll call it that, are just a couple colors of Copic markers. And I'll have a list of all the Copic markers over at my blog. Now for the hair, I decided to do kind of like a reddish tone. So I'm starting out with a base of YR14. Then I went in with some YR24, which is my mid-tone. And then I finished up with some YR27. Now I kind of went back and forth between those colors, kind of blending them out. And you'll see in the final product that I did go back and add a few more like flicks of the darkest color. And I didn't blend those out. Now in the pictures, they look like they're really like standing out crazy. But in real life, they're not standing out that much. So I just wanted to point that out. <laughs> So now I'm stamping a few more elements for the front of my card. I'm stamping some coral in the Lawn Fawn Guava ink, as well as the Simon Says Stamp Scuba ink. And then I stamped a couple more of these little things from the Mermaid For You stamp set. And one of them is this little rock. I'm coloring it with some W2 and some W5, just some basic two color blending. Once again, I start out with my lightest color. I add my deeper, darker tones, then blend it out with my lightest again. And that got me my little rock over there. Now the final thing I needed to stamp was some seaweed because every mermaid needs to have a bed of seaweed to hide in. <laughs> so for that, I am using the W plus nine new leaf ink. And so now that I have all these things stamped, I'm going to add the coordinating dies, run them through my die cut machine. You can see I'm cutting a bunch of items all at once so that I can make the most out of my passes with that die cut machine. And you can see all my adorable little things cut out over there and ready to go on the front of my card. Now for the card front, I use the Lawn Fawn Stitch Rectangle Die. This is the second to the largest rectangle of the large stitched rectangle set. You got that? Second to the largest of the large stitched rectangles. <laughs> And I cut that out. I was kind of sizing up to make sure I had room for all of my elements on this. And now I'm going to blend on with my ink blending tool. I am blending on some Simon Says Stamp Scuba ink. Now you'll see that when I tap this into my ink, I'm tapping off on that piece of scratch paper before I take it to my cardstock because I really don't want big blobs of ink. And by tapping off first, I get rid of some of that extra ink that's on there. And I kind of avoid that blob. Now, if I need to go in on the center of this cardstock, I just go in with a super, super feather light touch if I'm starting towards the middle of the cardstock. And I just worked with that until I got the blend that I wanted. And then I did intensify the color on the bottom of that panel. So now it's time to bring in the slide on over dies. And I'm going to be using this kind of wave shaped one. She's going to be able to swim up the card, kind of like she's swimming off of the rock and up towards the surface. 
So I kind of positioned it where I thought I wanted it. I held it in place with some micropore tape and then I just ran it through my die cut machine. And that's going to give me the little channel for my slider. Now the cool thing about these Lawn Fawn slide on over dies is that they go with the hillside borders. They kind of follow along those lines of those hillside borders that Lawn Fawn makes. So you can actually cut out the hillside and then have a slider element that goes along that as well. So that's kind of cool. Now for behind that channel, I needed a little piece of cardstock that kind of had that ink blending on it. So I wasn't having stark white showing through that channel. So I just blended a little bit of ink on that. And now I'm going to start positioning my elements onto my card front. So I have that rock there in the lower left-hand corner. I position that on there with a little bit of foam tape. And now I'm adding my seaweed on with some liquid glue there. And now it's time to add the foam tape to the back of this card front or this card panel so that I can create my shaker or not my shaker, my slider portion. It's not a shaker, it's a slider. Although I think it would be really cool to combine a shaker and a slider all in one. And I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to do that because it's in my head that I want to do that. <laughs> So I've doubled up my foam tape there and then I've cut it down into some slimmer strips there and I've added it all onto the back of that card front panel there. But you'll notice that I left some room because I have to add a penny on there for my slider. So I got out my wallet and I was hoping that I had a penny in my wallet and voila, I do. And so you'll see here that I left room for that penny to slide and so that foam tape wouldn't interfere with the sliding of that penny. Now in order to add this slider element, you can either do a rectangle piece of foam tape like I just showed you there, and that will keep your item kind of straight. But I'm going to add some circle foam dots here to the center of this penny. This is going to hold my mermaid onto the penny. But by adding the circle, it allows it not only to slide but to spin as well, so super fun. I treated the edges of that foam adhesive with a little bit of my powder tool so that it will slide through that channel a little bit easier. And I also treated the edges of that channel with some powder tool just so that that penny and that slider element will kind of slide more easily, right? I mean, we want it to slide. So now I removed the top backer on the top of that foam tape there and then attach my mermaid and you can see how she can slide up that channel and she can also twirl around too so she's like flipping in the water as she's sliding or swimming up towards the surface I think that's super fun so now I remove the backer from the foam adhesive that was on the back of my card front and I'm just adding that piece behind it so that I have that color behind the channel as well and you can see I I played with this thing like 18 times when I was playing with it. Do you see how fun that is? How when she slides, she twirls too? I just love that. And then when she goes to the bottom, it's like she's sitting on the rock. So beware when you make these, you will want to play with this card over and over and over again. Now in my playing, I did learn a valuable lesson and I kind of felt like my little mermaid was a little bit flimsy. Get it? The little mermaid? My little mermaid? I didn't even play on that, guys. It just, it just happened. <laughs> So I felt like she was a little flimsy. So I die cut another one of the mermaids, just a plain white one, and I adhered her to that to kind of double up the cardstock. Now you wouldn't have to do this if you had used, say, a 110 pound cardstock for the mermaid in the first place, but I didn't do that because I had no clue that I was going to run into that. But hey, you live and you learn, right? <laughs> So now it's time to move on to my sentiment. I am using this waving hello sentiment from that Mermaid For You stamp set. And I'm sure it's like mermaid for you, but I like to say mermaid for you. I don't know why. <laughs> so I'm just white heat embossing that on some vellum. I prepped the surface of my vellum first with a little EK Success powder tool. I stamped that in some Versamark ink onto the vellum, added my white, super fine detail white embossing powder, and then heat set it. And then I just took it over to my trimmer and trimmed it down into that banner shape. And that aluminum rail trimmer really allowed me to see exactly where I was trimming my sentiment. So I am loving that new aluminum rail trimmer from Fiskars. So I've attached that in there. I've kind of slid my sentiment behind the rock there. I've added another little bit of coral. And then I added some sparkle to her tail and her little, um, what did we call it? A bikini top, not a bra. 
I added a little sparkle with that using my Spectrum Noir clear overlay. And now I'm just adding this entire thing onto a white card base. This is a Nina Solar White 110 pound card base. And it is cut a little bit smaller than an A2 size card. So I just cut it slightly larger than the card panel that I created. And now you can see me adding that EK Success Powder Tool to the inside of that channel so that my mermaid can really slide in there very easily. And you know that this mermaid card would not be complete without some bubbles. So <laughs> I'm adding a mixture of some sparkling clear sequins from Pretty Pink Posh along with some of the clear droplets as well to add a little sparkle. Now, I have to tell you, not everything, not every idea is a good idea because I thought, let's add some sparkling clear sequins to her bikini top to make it look like shells. Y'all, this does not look like shells. Do you, do you see what I'm, do you see what I'm seeing here? <laughs> So not every idea is a good idea. Let's remove those and pretend like we never, ever saw that. And here's a look at my completed card project. I just love dies like these slide on over dies that make interactive cards so easy. This was such a fun card for me to create. And I think I'm going to have to do cutesy a little more often. As always, I will have links to all the supplies used in this project over at my blog at sprinkledwithglitter.com where you can see more still shots and find more information. And I will have links to the featured supplies in the description at YouTube. Thanks for stopping by today. If you enjoyed this project, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of my card making videos. Thanks for stopping by today and until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day.